Hey everybody, welcome back. Today I'm going to go through a D3H point group group theory problem. And we're going to use a trigonal bipyramidal molecule to do this. It's pretty straightforward really. Last time we went on a little bit on the easy side with a little C3V molecule. You can only have three symmetry operations and one of them is E, so that wasn't very much fun. But this time you got a lot going on in the D3H point group. First you have E, of course. Then you have two C3 operations. And then you have three C2 operations. One horizontal reflection plane. And then you've got two S3s in there. And three vertical reflection planes. Okay, so um, first we're going to go through the unshifted atoms. And so there's six molecules in here, so for E it's six. And let's think about for C3. C3, it's going to be straight down through the molecule. I'll draw it down here. It's just going to come straight down here. And you've got your rotation. So the unshifted atoms are going to be that metal right there, and then the two ligands. All these, the other three around there are going to shift. So you're going to get a three here. And for the C2, it's kind of going to be the same. You're just coming down here. And you shift that. So that's going to stay still, and that's going to stay still. So you got two for that. For the horizontal reflection plane, um, it's going to come through here. So the plane's going to be in that one, that one, that one, and this one. So the plane's going to look something like that. So the unshifted atoms are going to be 4. And for the S, I'm just going to go ahead and tell you it's 1. Because remember the S, it's a rotation and then a reflection. But in this case, all of the ligands, if you rotate and then reflect, all the ligands are going to move. The only thing that's going to be the same is that central metal molecule. So it's going to be 1, and that's going to be for the metal. We don't really even have to go through S. Usually, like I said before in earlier videos, S is either 0 or 1, and in this case it's 1. Um, and then for the uh, vertical reflection plane, let me go ahead and draw that. Remember the vertical reflection plane, it's going to be in line with that previous primary rotation axis. So there's the C3. And you got a ligand going back, a ligand coming up, a ligand going over here, and your reflection plane. Let's make it through this one, this one, this one, and this one. So actually, again, you're going to have four molecules in there, or four atoms, I'm sorry. And these are the two that are going to be reflected. So these are going to switch positions. And again, it's just that ligand, that ligand, that ligand, and that metal. Those are going to be all on the plane. OK, and then let's look at the contribution per atom. Um, remember last time we went through this, there's a little chart. E always equals 3. So let's go ahead and fill that in. Um, 
C has a formula, and S has a formula, but we also know the reflection planes always equal 1. And um, the formula for C is 2 times the cosine of theta plus 1. So 2 times the cosine of 120 plus 1 is equal to 0. And for this one, 2 times the cosine of 180 plus 1 is equal to negative 1. And for S, it's actually the same, um, except it's negative 1. So it's 2 times the cosine of 120 minus 1, and you're going to get negative 2. All right. And the way I do this, I think I explained it last time, um, I just go through and I multiply the number of symmetry operations or the number of operations for each symmetry element times the unshifted times the contribution per atom values and then that makes it a lot easier later on then I don't have to multiply three numbers by each other I can only multiply one at a time when I'm going through each irreducible representation so the overall for this atom that we're going to have is 3 times 6 times 1. So we have an 18 out here. And then 0 is going to zero that all out. Then we're going to have negative 6 for this one. Again, it's 3 times 2 times 1. I'm just multiplying by that coefficient out in front of the symmetry element. And for this one, it's going to be 4. And for this one, we're going to have negative 4. And for the last one, we're going to get a 12. And if you sum this, you will find that is equal to 24. Now remember, I told you you need to calculate h. So we have 3, 6, 7, 9, and 12. So for D3H, H equals 12. Okay. And remember, I told you right here, you want to make sure that's a multiple of H. So it is. 24 over 12 is 2. So we're still in the clear. We can move on. Okay, I just took a short break to um, reset up our table with our reducible representation for our trigonal bipyramidal molecule. And again, that's a D3H point group, H equals 12 for this. And here's the D3H character table. So first we're going to go through and multiply A1 prime. And you can see right away it's all 1s. A1 prime is always 1s, or A1 in general. It's just the easiest irreducible representation. So again, we know that that adds up to 24. So A1 prime is going to equal 2. And you'll if you um, didn't watch the video before this or you're not sure what I'm doing, I'll just show you why. Because we'll do A2 here. Okay, so this is equal to 1 over 12. Because again, H is 12. Times 1 times 18 because our E is 18 so here E is 1 and 0 for the next term there's our 2C3 is 0 and then a 0 okay and the next one you just multiply through the matrix like you normally would get a positive 6 there positive 4, negative 4, and a negative 12. 
Um, I'm not really multiplying out on the paper. I'm just going to go through <laughs> show you guys. So we're going to have 12 over 12 for this. That sums to 12. So we're going to get a 1 for this term. We got a 2 for the top term because it added up to 24. Remember, this one adds up to 24. And we divide it by 12. So that's where that came from. And then E prime... E prime, it's equal to 1 over 12. 2 times 18 is 36. Plus 0 for the next term. And 0 for the next term. And then 2 for the term after that. So we're going to get another 0. And then we're going to have an 8 over here. And the next two terms are negative 1 and 0. So we're going to have a positive 4 followed by a 0. So if you watch this, everything is equaling multiples of h. And if something doesn't, you screwed up somewhere. So as soon as that happens, you want to go back and you want to check those first two steps when we found the contribution per atom and when we found the number of unshifted atoms for each symmetry element. Okay, A1 prime, 1, 1, 1, negative 1, negative 1, negative 1, that's easy enough. So we have positive 18 plus 0 plus negative 6 and then now it's all negative ones so we're going to have minus 4 here positive 4 here um, minus 12 here and that's going to equal 0 So for that whole term, it's 0. OK. A2 double prime. Sorry if this is tedious, guys, but that's how it's done. Got an 18 here. Sorry, I'll make that more look like an 18 plus another one and the negative ones and then a one okay we got a zero it's times negative one so we're gonna get a positive six here okay then we're gonna have negative four there and then reverse signs again we're gonna get a positive four and the last one was a positive one so that's gonna give us a twelve and that is 36 over 12 and we get a 3 alright I'm gonna break right here and then we'll do E double prime when we come back